Thanks, Nancy. Um, so there's a lot of exciting stuff happening these days at the intersection of art and science, and that's the territory in which my work um, has evolved, and this collaborative project called Synchronous Objects that I'm going to talk about tonight. But projects like these and collaborations like these happen in very specific and particular institutional contexts that nurture the kind of connections that are necessary. And for me, that institutional context is, is a little place called the Advanced Computing Center for the Arts and Design. It's just west of here on the Ohio State campus. And ACAD's special for a lot of reasons, um, namely that it's been doing interdisciplinary arts-driven research for a long time. And in particular for me, they've had a long collaboration with dance and choreography, which is my principal um, disciplinary identity, although I have a few. Um, ACAB was founded in the 70s by a guy I like to bring his picture in. This is Chuck Surrey, and he was a former football star, turned painter, turned computer graphics innovator, who understood very early on in the nascent field of computer graphics that in order for it to evolve, there had to be the close and extended collaboration between artists and scientists. They had to get in a messy, mixed up, creative and analytical space together. And that's the institutional history that I had the benefit of inheriting when I came just a few years ago to Ohio and started working at ACAD. So we made this project, it's called Synchronous Objects, and we call it a choreographic visualization project. If you don't know what that means, that's okay, we kind of made it up. But um, basically it's visualization, and we know what that means from when we've watched NOVA or probably more likely CSI, and you can see they kind of go into a, the body and show you how a circulatory system works or they map the gen genome. That's what we're doing, but in our case, we have a different source of information. It's dance and it's choreography. Now, the project was initiated by William Forsyth and he is a renowned choreographer, but he's most special for having completely reimagined the possibilities of classical ballet, kind of exploded the boundaries of the form. And he came to my colleague Maria Palazzi and I in 2005 and he said, he said, what if, what if we just took this dance, took one of my dances, I gave it to you, and we got a bunch of smart people in the room, and we asked, what else might this dance look like? What else, besides the body, might physical thinking look like? And that's a really interesting question. We were really intrigued with that. It's also a really interdisciplinary question, so it was appropriate for our work at ACAM. We approached that question, what else might physical thinking look like, in a process of discovery that we like to describe as flowing from dance to data to objects and back around again. The dance is this piece, it's called One Flat Thing Reproduced, it's by William Forsyth. The version that we worked with is from 2005 and it's shot in a train depot in Frankfurt, Germany. The data are quite simply numeric translations of choreographic structures. But they're not super duper high tech computer generated press a button and get numbers data. I would like you to think of them more as handmade. They're, our process here is a little bit more akin to an ethnographer's process who might be going into a culture and trying to discover what makes it tick. We did the same thing. We interviewed all 17 dancers and the choreographer and we worked together to understand the inner workings of this dance. We crunched those into numbers, we put them in a database, and then we made some pretty pictures with them. These are our visualizations. These are our objects, from dance to data to objects. And what you're seeing here is actually just a video of the interface that you would encounter if you come visit our project online. Um, it's a multi, it's, there's multiple points of entry in this interface. So we wanted to make sure that there were lots of ways in and that we could accommodate lots of disciplinary um, points of inspiration in the project. But tonight I want to bring you in through the dance itself and into an interface where you can see just a taste of what this piece is about. Again, the piece is called One Flat Thing Reproduced. It's about 15 minutes long. I'm going to show you just a tiny taste of it. And it's for 17 dancers. What's going to open here is an interface that has a video of the dance, some commentary, some um, fancy little features, and the data kind of scrolling down underneath the video. The dancers will pull the table on, tables on, and then I'm going to advance it forward a little bit because I want to give you a visual taste. So it'll kind of stutter forward until we get to about minute five. And what you're going to notice very quickly as the dance unfolds is that it encompasses a high degree of difference. These dancers are not very often doing the exact same thing. 
They are, however, in relationship to one another. They are, however, constructing a kind of cacophonous sort of structure. And we call this structure, we like to give it a name, we call it counterpoint. And the counterpoint in this dance is like an ecosystem. It's like a complex interplay. It's like a community of practice. And what you see then in all of this difference might not immediately become, the patterns not, might not immediately be evident to you. But what we've done is to kind of unpack them in the data that's there running below. And you can see the color bars there. Those are moments of uh, movement material. Those are the building blocks of the dance, moments of improvisation where they're making more choices themselves. The curved lines are the cues that they give to each other, so they direct the timing and flow of the dance. And the yellow notations are alignments. There are instances in the dance when the dancer's motions share some, but not all, attributes. So they're coming into degrees of agreement, forms of alignment, and this is significant for understanding counterpoint in this dance. All of the objects try to talk about counterpoint, but all of the objects also try to invite you in from different disciplinary perspectives. The ones in blue over there are kind of more didactic. We're saying, Let's, let me help you see pattern in the dance. Let me just try to be explicit. And the, the objects in the purple and yellow over to the side are more parallel virtual incarnations of counterpoint, as you can see also in this original interface. So let's dive into the objects a little bit. This is just a sampling of a few. Here you have the more didactic pattern um, recognition objects. This next one is um, a motion volumes object where you can see the dancers carve out their own three-dimensional spaces. Looks kind of like an envelope of behavior as an architect might, might say. The next one is our data fan that Matt Lewis created. The data fan uses those, those data that the dancers gave us and that's what drives the number of blades in the fan. But then it's a, a set of conceptual and creative decisions that create its counterpoint. And this is our interactive tool. It's, a, it's called the counterpoint tool. And here we just let you play with these ideas yourself in a simplified visual environment. Kind of try to unlock structure for yourself and see complex forms of relationship between these moving widgets. Perhaps most of all, our objects reflect the multidisciplinary perspectives in this project, people from geography, from computer science, architecture, design, dance, and beyond. And they are expressions of the exuberant exchange of ideas that we experienced in their creation. But this leads me then to just pause for a moment and recognize that I'm a dancer and choreographer trying to excite you about choreographic knowledge and I'm doing so through animation and visual media. Some have suggested then that this project and others like it might reflect a kind of post medium moment. And we can hope maybe also that they reflect a post-disciplinary moment, but I'm showing my biases. So for me, post-medium moments happen in groups. They, have, they happen in teams. It is about teamwork. And so I just like to show a picture of some of the people who put their labor and effort and energy into constructing this project. More than 20 different students, staff, and faculty researchers were involved. And it's their collective intelligence that came together to make the work. But it came together in a very particular way. And it's a way that I've come to call counterpoint. So this is my last point tonight. And I just want to suggest that there are, there are many good ways to work in groups, right? And if we want to understand counterpoint as a model for a particular kind of group dynamics, it's helpful to maybe think of it on a spectrum. On one side of the spectrum is counterpoint, and on the other side is a marching band. Right? We all understand a marching band. We see structure immediately. They're marching literally to the same tune. So the top structure of a marching band is unity and relationship. But in fact, of course, they have a lot of differences in individual disagreements and diversity in that marching band, right? But we don't see that. That's their deep structure. Counterpoint is the exact inverse. In counterpoint, instead, the primary visual effect is difference is all of that complexity that you see in that image. It's at the layer of the deep structure that the relationships become apparent. And I think this is significant not only as a concrete phenomenon in dance, but also as a larger metaphor 
that's applicable to how we look at and analyze ecosystems, to how we maybe notice the play of light on the water or the interaction of branches and the canopies of the trees above us, and to how we interact with the complex realities of our daily lives. So what if, what if in those situations where there is conflict in your lives, in those situations where we are encountering maybe just a lot of difference in our classrooms, in the downtown streets, in our workplaces. What if we approach those situations contrapuntaling? And we didn't try to squeeze these things into marching bands of unity, but instead we get pretty excited about that disagreement and difference and heighten our attention to the deep structures, the deep sets of relationships, degrees of alignment, quirky little agreements that are percolating under the surfaces of our lives all the time. So this is what we experienced in our interdisciplinary community of practice on this project. This is what the dance itself demonstrates in a very concrete way. And this is the hidden structure of choreographic knowledge that Synchronous Objects seeks to make visible. Thank you.